The Little Horn of Daniel 8. The Little Horn of Daniel 8 is parallel to the Little Horn of Daniel 7. The two prophecies refer to the same power. Let's review. Who is the goat of Daniel 8? The angel Gabriel explained to Daniel that the goat represents the kingdom of Greece. The first horn is Alexander the Great, and the four horns that arose after he died represent his four generals who divided the kingdom into four sections. Where did the little horn come from? Daniel 8.8 8 reads, Therefore the male goat grew very great. But when he became strong, the large horn was broken, and in place of it four notable ones came up for the four winds of heaven. And out of the one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great towards the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. The little horn of Daniel 7-8 arises from among the ten horns of the dreadful fourth beast, which represents imperial pagan Rome. The little horn represents the papal Roman system which rose up from among the ten horns. The ten horns represent the divided Roman Empire now known as Western Europe. If the horns of Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 represent the same power, then why does one originate from Rome, the fourth beast, and the other originates from one of the four Greek horns? Both historians, Virgil and Seneca, make it very clear that Roman civilization, religion, and culture had their origins in Pergamum, located in Asia Minor. Pergamum was part of the Greek Seleucid Empire. The first phase of the little horn was pagan imperial Rome. The second phase was the papal Roman system, which is still in existence today. Both phases are represented by the little horn. Point 2. Are there any parallels between the little horns of Daniel 7 and 8? 1. Both are referred to as a horn, and even though Daniel 7 is written in Aramaic and Daniel 8 is written in Hebrew, Karen, the Hebrew word for horn, is used in both chapters. 2. Both horns are little. 3. Both become great after they had a small beginning. 4. Both are described as persecuting powers. 5. The persecution is against the same target group. 6. Both are self-exalting and blasphemous. 7. Both are described as possessing crafty intelligence. One has the eyes of a man, and the other understands riddles and cunning and deceit. 8. Both represent the final power that will rule upon the earth. 9. Both horns have to do with the prophetic time. 10. Both expand until the time of the end. 11. Both horns are supernaturally destroyed when Jesus comes. Point 3. What kingdoms did the little horn rule? Daniel 8, 9 reads, And out of one of them came a little horn which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. Greece, Asia Minor, and Syria are east of Rome. Egypt is to the south, and the glorious land is the land of Israel. History tells us that Rome conquered these very lands. Note that pagan imperial Rome conquers only geographically and horizontally. It is concerned only with earthly political power. This is the first phase of the Little Horn's conquests. Point 4. What is the second phase of the Little Horn power? Daniel 8.10 reads, and it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground, and trampled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. This verse describes a shift. The little horn starts fighting against the God of heaven. He casts down some of the hosts and some of the stars to the ground and tramples them. He even exalts himself as high as the prince of the host. He is no longer conquering geographically and horizontally. He is fighting vertically against God. Note the parallel with Daniel 7. In Daniel 7, pagan Rome conquers geographically, but then the little horn rises and speaks blasphemies against God, and it persecutes the saints of the Most High, and it thinks to change times and law. Point 5. What is meant by the host and the stars? Did the little horn cast down the angels? Daniel 8.24 reads, He shall destroy the mighty, and also the holy people. The host and the stars represent the people of God. Verse 10 says the horn trampled them. Here is another parallel with Daniel 7. Both horns persecuted the saints of the Most High. This is referring to the Dark Ages, the Inquisitions, the martyrs who were burned at the stake and tortured and killed. Point 6. Who is the prince of the host? Joshua 5.13-15 through 15 uses this identical expression and is the only other place in the entire Bible that uses this exact terminology. Joshua 5.13 reads, 
And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped, and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The word commander in Joshua 13 and Prince in Daniel 8 both come from the same Hebrew word Tsar. Strong's Concordance translates Tsar as commander, prince, captain, and other similar terms. We clearly see that the commander of the army of the Lord was Jesus Christ himself. Joshua fell and worshipped him, and God told him to take his sandals off his feet, because the place where he was standing was holy ground. Point 7. Many scholars say that the little horn represents Antiochus Epiphanes. Is the little horn Antiochus or the papal system? Antiochus Epiphanes was a Greek king of the Seleucid Empire who reigned from around 175 to 164 BC. He persecuted the Jews and they revolted against him. This revolt is known as the Maccabean Revolt. Already enraged by his defeat in Egypt, Antiochus attacked Jerusalem and executed 40,000 people and sold another 40,000 into slavery. In Daniel 8, the Bible pronounces the Medo-Persian Empire as great, the Greek Empire as very great, and the Little Horn as exceedingly great. Antiochus Epiphanes does not compare with these empires. He only reigned for about 11 years and was defeated by Egypt. Compared to these great empires, Antiochus was a non-entity. Point 8. What is meant in verse 12 by an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground? The papal system did not have its own army. It used the armies of the ten European kingdoms to trample the saints. You can read about the Crusades, St. Bartholomew's Massacre, the Albigensian Crusade, which was a 20-year military campaign initiated by Pope Innocent III, and other atrocities against the people of God. Point 9. How did the little horn cast down truth to the ground? Daniel 8.25 reads, Through his cunning he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. The angel Gabriel explains to Daniel in this verse that the little horn will cause deceit to prosper. What is meant by this? We will study the sanctuary, the daily, and the truths that were cast down in more detail in the next video. But in summary, the church began to teach the people traditions such as purgatory, limbo, celibacy, auricular confession, eternally burning in hell, bowing before images, the observance of Sunday, and several others, none of which are taught in the Bible. Furthermore, several councils, including the Council of Toulouse of 1229, forbade laity to read the Bible. The result was that the light of God's word was dimmed and Europe was plunged into the dark ages. The people of God who read the Bible and obeyed its teachings suffered untold persecution. The Bible teaches that this power will become strong again, and God's people once again suffer persecution for believing and obeying biblical truths. The verse also says he would exalt himself. This is parallel to the horn of Daniel 7. Daniel 7.25 reads, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. The horn in both of these prophecies persecutes the people of God for 1260 years and exalts himself and speaks pompous words. It changed times and law by teaching tradition instead of teaching the law of God. For example, Papal Rome changed the observance of Saturday, the biblical Sabbath, to Sunday, which is the pagan day of worship to the sun god, and it also eliminated the commandment that forbids having other gods and bowing down to them. It split the tenth commandment about coveting into two commandments to preserve the number of commandments. Point 10. How long will the little horn trample the sanctuary and the host? Daniel 8.13 reads, How long will the vision be the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? And he said to me, For two thousand three hundred days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. This verse teaches that the sanctuary and the host would be trampled underfoot for 2,300 days. In prophetic time, this translates to 2,300 years. 
See Ezekiel 4, 6, and Numbers 14, 34. The little horn is exceedingly great. It rolls until the end of time when it will be broken without human means. If you want to learn more about the prophecies of Daniel 2, 7, and 8, click on the links at the right side of this screen to watch more videos on these topics. You don't need to guess. The Bible interprets itself. Until next time, God bless you.